More news on green madness. Mr Bean actor Rowan Atkinson is being blamed by the UK's House of Lords for a drop in sales of electric vehicles. The Lords Environment and Climate Change Committee says an opinion piece Atkinson wrote for The Guardian last year was one of the most damaging articles in the UK's quest to achieve net zero. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak pledged to ban all new petrol and diesel cars by 2035. But Rowan Atkinson, who says he bought his first EV 18 years ago, well, he wrote, Increasingly, I'm feeling that our honeymoon with electric cars is coming to an end. Friends with an environmental conscience often ask me as a car person whether they should buy an electric car. I tend to say that if their car is an old diesel and that they do a lot of city centre motoring, they should consider a change. But otherwise... Hold fire for now. Electric propulsion will be of real global environmental benefit one day, but that day has yet to dawn. That's an understatement indeed. The Australian's environment editor, Graeme Lloyd, joins me now. Uh, Graeme, uh, there are a lot of uh, early adopters who are having uh, second thoughts about their EV purchases, aren't they? Yes, good evening, Rita. <clears throat> the, the truth is that the uh, Rowan Atkins piece has caused such a fuss uh, because the numbers are coming in and the sales of EVs are about half what governments and the car industry had hoped they would be. Uh, and worse than that, people who have bought an EV, often when they buy their next vehicle, they're going back to internal combustion engines. So there, there's a real mm. disconnect between uh, what is supposed to be happening and what is happening in actual fact. And Rowan Atkinson's uh, a very interesting person. Not, not only is he a very funny actor as Mr Bean, uh, he's also an electrical engineer and has a master's in that uh, subject. Uh, he's a car nut. Mm. And uh, as you said, he's a very early adopter of these cars. And he, he's looked at them on a life cycle analysis uh, and said, well, you know, you can't just measure what comes out of the tailpipe. Uh, you have to look at the cost of building them, how long they last and all these other things. And on those measures, the best environmental thing people could do is hang on to their existing car longer and not drive it as much. Absolutely. Now, you wrote a piece about the federal court case involving Santos's $4.5 billion pipeline and how it's exposed how mm. sacred stories of Aboriginal mythology are now on the same level as scientific fact when it comes to green experts. Uh, what does this mean for the country? How much is that going to cost us? Well, this is something that the courts now have to grapple with. There's... Uh, been an adoption, if you like, of uh, Indigenous mythology uh, adopted by the Green Movement to try and stop pro projects. I think the Federal Court did everyone a favour by actually putting this to the test and they found, well, really the expert who gave evidence had uh, been motivated by his own desires to uh, stop the project and he had sort of laid that onto the uh, Indigenous community. Uh, and it really begs the question, how much of this is going on in this area? Uh, and uh, I explored uh, a number of areas, particularly around planning approvals for uh, renewable energy developments <clears throat> where there might be some uh, competing environmental issues. Uh, and the fact is that a lot of these uh, evidence put forward by experts is not tested under the rigours uh, that it would be if it were presented in court. And there's a really good argument that there should be a much greater uh, onus put onto uh, this expert evidence that's, uh, that's leading to uh, projects that, you know, either uh, inconvenience people or are going to uh, make a lot of money for the state uh, and they should be allowed to proceed. Graham Lloyd, always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Mm.